So variants can appear in any time period. Yeah, that's a little bit of an unexplained contrivance, but hey, this is fantasy we're watching. As if we needed reminding. Except this is the sacred timeline in 1868, so wouldn't that version of He Who Remains actually be the main one who still be killed last season? The Kang from season one is from the 31st century, and when we meet up with that variant in 1893, 25 years later, we're now on a branched timeline, so it's not the same Kang. Ah, time travel gives me a headache. Hey, Kevin Fennec here, and we travel into the past to save all of existence. Just an excuse for a bit of period dressing if you ask me. And a sepia filter on the lens. And a cool ragtime version of the Marvel theme tune, but I don't mind a change of location, especially one with so many details and historical accuracy as long as the story progresses. And does it? It does, and it doesn't. There's a lot of padding as we spend a lot of time looking at the setting and seeing what this variant of He Who Remains has done with his life and the information that was dropped onto his lap 25 years prior. Along with a bit of sightseeing for Loki and Mobius. Yeah, the temporal loom's about to blow back at the TVA, yet there's little sense of urgency. Except during the fights. Only during the fights. But we have time to wander around, eat snacks, complain about cultural oversimplification, listen to demonstrations, travel for hours. I think we're just supposed to take it all in. Then don't put a crucial disaster about to blow any second in the back of our minds. Fair point. Plus, how did Sylvie find them? She's got the main time path. But finding that particular variant just at the right time? Actually, she could have gone back a few years earlier in the sacred timeline and kill him then. Then the story wouldn't happen. Exactly. It's a bit plot holy. Oh, and how did they locate the variant's lab in Wisconsin? Wisconsin's a pretty big place, you know. It feels like this entire episode was set up to get a He Who Remains variant back to the TVA, and everything else was window dressing. Although we do learn a new motivation from Miss Minutes. Oh, I'm sorry, Commander, that doesn't make sense to me. If He Who Remains created her and gave her the freedom to expand her own programming, why couldn't she build a body for herself by herself? So the motivation would happen. Of of course. Think they're turning her into an evil, jealous AI. Bit cliche if you ask me. And how did this version of Kang manage to create a working prune stick when he told us all his inventions couldn't really work due to the limitations of 19th century technology? Because it's fantasy? Anachronistic inconsistencies due to poor writing kinda irk me. It irks us all, McClock, but I'll admit it. It was fun to see our characters in period costumes. Mobius appearing with a tandem bike for him and Loki was hilarious. Yes. But the sense of urgency is pretty much missing. Seems we're here to enjoy the sights, which in itself isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it does feel like a lot of padding. For a season composed of only six episodes, that's a tad concerning. Plus, last episode was all about fighting Sylvie, which didn't really lead to anything, and now it's all about finding Rainslayer. Well, finding Sylvie allowed for a few fight scenes in this episode. And not finding her would have made capturing this Kang variant so much easier. Hopefully. It'll make sense by the end. By the end of time. I don't think we've got that long, though. I want to see more of Ouroboros. We all do. I'm awarding 1893 two paws. But tell me, what did you think of this episode? Share your thoughts in the comments. Live long, and may the force be with you.